it's a webinar today that's focused purely on visual context, how to get a clearer view on your translations. Connor, how important is visual context to you as a customer success manager when you're considering um, your communication with customers and how they realize value out of the Sparling platform or how to, how to realize high quality translation? Yeah, so, so visual context definitely plays an important part in achieving high quality translations and, and also faster translations. So getting things to market quicker, visual context really does play an important part of, of that. And that's one of the unique things about the Smartling you'll see in the industry, a lot of translation management platforms, but Smartling is one of the few that provides this visual context component. And so that's something that I really emphasize to customers that the visual context helps translators, editors, virtually anyone that's working with translation platform to visual component of how those translations appear, whether that's in your website, documents, any kind of technical files. It allows you to see those translations, how they would appear, um, you know, on your or in your document or wherever it may be coming from in real time and really try and get it right the first time instead of having to go through and make additional edits and really add a lot of time onto the process. It adds a lot of value to customers using the platform for translations. Yeah, that's awesome. So, okay, so let's, let's, let's um, you know, the, the, the name of the webinar is Translation in Real Time, How Visual Context allows you to translate clearly. For those of you who are on the call and don't know me, I'm Adrian Cohn. I'm, I'm the Director of Marketing at Smartling and I'm really excited to be joined by Connor, who's our Customer Success Manager. Um, both of us have been with the company for a pretty long time. Actually, Connor joined the company as I exited the Customer Success team. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna bring you some, some thoughts. So first and foremost, you know, uh, having a translation management system, Connor, this is a pretty important part of the language translation process, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. So um, what do you okay. see as being like the most value for, for customers when they, when they have a translation management system? I mean, a, a lot of ways this really benefits customers. One is centralization of all of their translation content. So for customers that aren't using a translation management platform, they may be sending their stuff to get translated, you know, to an agency, whoever they work with, by email, by Dropbox, by all these different methods. And a lot of times it's sort of a black box. They send their content to whoever's doing the mission, no idea where the content is in the process, and then they get the translated content back. So the translation management platform that Smartling offers allows not just the centralization of all of your content from all of its different sources, web, mobile, website, documents, technical files, um, really anything like that, centralizes it but it also gives you transparency into the process so you can see where your translated content lives through the entire life cycle of the translation process and you can interact with it so you can talk to your translators you can talk to your reviewers um, you can add instructions add notes you can really control everything that's going on in the process yeah and and that's really important because mm. the difference between having a translation management system and not having a translation management system is pretty monumental. If you're yep. not working with Smartling, you're likely utilizing an email-based workflow to manage your translation. You certainly don't, or, or you certainly, uh, m most customers or most folks who don't use Smartling don't have direct communication with their translators. These are two very, very distinct differences between working with Smartling and working with a different uh, langu language service provider or working without a translation management system. So when you are working with customers, Connor, uh, I imagine that speed to market, quality translations and cost come up pretty frequently. Yeah, for sure. Those are definitely the three most important things that we hear from customers. You know, from, for each customer, it varies a little bit what is kind of their primary focus, but usually all three of these come to play at one time or another. Yeah, and today we're gonna narrow our focus into quality because that's where visual context comes in. So Connor, what, what is visual context? Yeah, so, so visual context is the visual component that the Smartling platform offers to allow you to see your translations that are happening in time, um, site, on your mobile app, on your web application, on your document. Um, so trans or editors or reviewers, whoever's working in the platform, working on those translations, they're able to see their translation and how they're with the website, within the web app, 
Like, does it fit the space that is allowed? They can see it in the greater context of the overall page instead of seeing just the text element. So it allows them to kind of correlate the translation to the overall style of the page or the website or the document and really get sort of overall view of how the should, should appear sort of in the bigger picture of the, the context of the content that they're, they're trans. Yeah, it's, it's such an important uh, feature. And we're gonna show it to you a little later. We're gonna do an actual demo so that people who are on the webinar can see what visual context looks like in SmartLang. But I, I am so drawn to this feature because as a content marketer and somebody who cares a lot about the brand, it's mission critical to understand what it is that you're promoting or what your product is. And the words that you use to describe the product have to match the visuals quite you know, quite closely. Um, yeah. And in, in that process of content translation and localization, without seeing the, the runner or the shoes that are being sold, how can you create the passion that brands need to create out of their content today? Because there are a lot of shoe companies and really the differentiator now is the, the content that's used to promote or sell the actual product. So one of the things that we want to do on this call is make sure that folks who don't use visual context right now, and it looks like one, uh, one webinar participant, Christy, is, is one that's not using visual context, is, is looking to add it. There are four ways that, that we can use to capture context with SmartLang. Uh, why don't we walk through those four? How does that sound, Connor? Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, so, so the first one is honestly the easiest, uh, is much more manual, which is simply uploading screenshots. Um, so you can take screenshots or images that you have, like a P or JPEG file, um, and you can upload it in a SmartLing, and you can associate those images with existing strings of text that you have in the platform. So we have a manual way to do that. So you can just simply check the string and say, I want to associate this image. Or we have a much more automated way, which we'll go through in the demo, where you can upload a bunch of images in bulk, and we have tech that automatically syncs those images with the corresponding strings that we see have related text. Now, this is a really important solution that we have, the ability to drag and drop context. And by the way, there are like nuances of our products that enable you to upload many images at the same time and they will automatically associate themselves with different strings using the technology that Connor referenced. But it, it's certainly not the most automated solution. Uh, what, are, what, what does the Chrome extension offer our SmartLine customers? Yeah, so the Chrome extension um, is a tool that allows you to capture content from your website. It can also be a web app, but it also um, is a much more automated. So basically what you do is you use like a, an extension that you download and you can use a keyboard shortcut. And as you're scrolling through your web app or your website, you can actually sort of click and take a snapshot as you're going through. Uh, so this may not be good for a really large one where you need to capture the bulk of the content, but if you're targeting very specific pages of your site, um, rather than having to take a manual screenshot, you can kind of click through and just snapshots and it automatically feeds those images into your corresponding project in SmartLink. So you don't have to really upload those or do a bulk drop, it just feeds them right into the platform for you. Yeah, I think, I think that's a great solution, especially when you have targeted pages that you need to capture context from. And uh, it's, it's a really simple one-click sort of solution to, to capture that context. But there's another way to do it, which will be an even more programmatic way of capturing context with the JavaScript context library. Yeah, so, so this is definitely the most comprehensive, I would say, of the context options as far as capturing of the context elements, especially from a web page. Um, so that's the primary use for the JavaScript library. It can, again, also be used for a web app, but I often use for websites. Um, so basically, you take a little code snippet, and it can be embedded into HTML or JavaScript on a website. And as basically you navigate through the site, or as even like organic traffic navigates through the site, it captures HTML snapshots of each of those pages of the site. So if you're really trying to capture all of the context from a website and you're not using like one of our connectors, which we can talk about, um, the JavaScript library is really the best way to handle capturing all of the content from the site. 
That's exactly right. And I just posted a comment in the, the chat that's going to direct people to help.smartlink.com. If you search visual contacts in our help center, you'll see how all of these solutions work in detail. Uh, you'll learn about how to install them. And of course, your customer success manager or account manager can help you. But there is one more solution that we offer called the context crawler. Can you tell us a little bit about that, Connor? Sure, yeah, so the context crawler is another way to capture content, again, mostly from websites or web apps. Um, but it works almost like if any of you have, have used like a traditional web crawler extension or something like that before, it works very similar. You basically plug in a URL and it's crawling the site and captures the context um, by simply doing a crawl. Um, there are a few limitations. Again, it is good for a website, but only if the website is, I think, under like a thousand pages is sort of our limit. So this is good for a smaller site or where you don't want to actually embed code on the site like you have to do with the JavaScript library to capture a lot of that content. So these are four different solutions. Of course, the solution that you use will depend on the content that you're translating. It'll depend on the technology that you're using to translate all of this content. But we do have some guidelines that we can offer to help you understand about which methodology will work best for your content. Yeah, that's absolutely right. So you can see we've kind of broken it out here by each of the different tools that we offer. Screenshots really could apply to just about any kind of content type in the platform. Um, so like resource files and technical files, we give a few examples, could be like JSON, XML, DITA. We offer a lot of different resource files that can be supported in SmartLink. And a lot of those don't provide any element of context. And so we can use the screenshots to sync up the text from those files with the images that you're uploading into the platform. Um, content submitted through the API. So if you're using an API integration, um, we can also sync up screenshots with any kind of content submitted through your API integration. Mobile apps. So if you are using like an iOS or Android app integration, we can use screenshots that you've captured to sync up that content. Um, we find that's really useful for mobile app translations, especially when there's character limitations. It'll really see kind of whether or not the translated text will fit within those confines. Um, and then native content from connectors. So if you're not familiar, we offer a bunch of different connectors to like CMS platforms, like common ones like Drupal, WordPress, Contentful. Those do pull in native context. So we get the context provided by those CMS connectors. You can always substitute some of that or add additional context by uploading screenshots as well. Um, it's the JavaScript library. Oh, so yeah, it's worth noting, Connor, that like all of those integrations that you just mentioned, they, they do have the ability to capture visual context, but there are always little pieces of content that are really hard to capture. So for example, if you're an e-commerce website and you have a pop-up that comes up if you're in the checkout flow, that may be a piece of content that you, you may not be able to programmatically capture. And that's where you'd use the screenshot methodology. Right, exactly. So we get the native, the native context from the connectors, but this is a way to substitute some of the content that may not automatically capture that context. Um, so again, you can kind of provide the full comprehensive context view of the entire site. Um, so this, the screenshots definitely help aid in that for sure. Yeah, and, and I guess like the, the other type of connector that we have, we should have maybe made a slide about this, but mm -hmm. our flagship solution, the Global Delivery Network, is a web proxy that allows us to automatically capture all of your content and your creative work, your, your, your context, so that you can translate your website and web applications without using any of the options that you've seen displayed here. It's built in natively to that proxy. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good point. Yeah. So the, the proxy network, what we call the global delivery, um, really provides one of the highest levels of context that I've seen. Um, we're really just creating basically a mirror of your for each kind of language version of the site that you're translating and you get the full context, every element of context from the page with basically no additional work required. Um, so that's a major benefit of the global delivery network. Yeah, totally. Um, so kind of, yeah, we, we kind of discussed this, but you know, for the JavaScript library, really that is for websites and web applications. And I would say overall, that is the best solution for a website or web application. But in some cases, just to be clear, it does require someone with a knowledge of the structure of your site because you are embedding a code snippet. 
Um, so this is really useful if you have any kind of resource that can assist you. It's a one-time embed, but it does require a little technical knowledge um, in order to do that. That is the most comprehensive. The next is the context crawler. Pretty much anyone can use that. So if there is some sort of barrier to embedding the JavaScript library, your next option for bits or web applications would probably be the context crawler. Very simple to use. You just plug in a URL and it runs. And then the last one is the Chrome extension. And the Chrome extension, again, is really available to anyone. It's a little bit more manual work, but not as much as screenshots. And it is good if you're targeting specific sub pages of a website or particular portions of a site rather than their website. Yeah, well, I, I think Connor, it's time to, to dive in and show everybody what this actually looks like in the platform. Yeah. I'll let you take over the screen share. Sounds good. Are you able to see this okay? Yeah, it looks great. Perfect. So let's launch a Smartling job here and we'll open it up in the cat tool, which if you're not familiar with Smartling or you haven't used it, um, the cat tool is the computer assisted translation tool. And that's the tool built into the Smartling platform where all of the translators, editors, reviews are working in the platform. Um, we have two different forms of tool. You'll kind of see this, but I have what's called a review mode. And then we have the full cat tool. So what I'm doing here is I'm in the cat tool. One of the things you see here is the style guide. Um, I don't wanna to go too much into that, but the style guide is just another way to aid in translation quality. This is where uh, customers can provide their sort of linguistic preferences, like formality, tone, style. Um, and again, that's one of the components, like along with the contacts that helps aid in mission quality platform. So you can see here, when I launched the CAD tool, you've got your translation options down here in the bottom. So you can see the English source. This is where the translations are happening. And then up here in this top view, if I drag down a little bit, this is the view that the translators, editors, reviewers get. So you can kind of see the text of your translations on the page to see what would appear. And it interacts. So not all content types are interactive in the context view. It's one thing to note, but a lot are. Most website content, um, most content from the GDN, a lot of different document types of word, you can actually click on the text and it will actually highlight that text down here in the translation column and vice versa. If I click on service client, you notice it highlights that text here in the context view. And if I actually start to type here, type anything. You can see as I'm typing in real time, it starts to display that in the context view. So this is great for trainers and editors and reviewers to see what those translations, what that text would look like on the website or again in the web app or in a document. So they can see that in real time. And again, they can see that in the larger context of the page rather than just having it be like working in a spreadsheet where you're basically just going through columns of text without that larger insight into how it appears. There's so many benefits to that, Connor. I mean, a few that come to my mind is, of course, you, you can translate the content with context so you know how long the translation will be. You'll see yep. if it's breaking the user experience. Uh, you have the ability in this dashboard that you're looking at right now to directly communicate with the uh, content creator so that you can ask questions about what the translation should be like if there are questions about that. Uh, you also have access to your translation memory and all sorts of notes from your style guide and glossary that will help you to translate the content more efficiently. So that's certainly um, a really, really important strategic advantage. And it's also worth mentioning that all of this is in the cloud. So as soon as you upload the files, whether it's through drag and drop or through JavaScript context library, the visual context is attached to that string for life. And no translator has to download anything. They can access all of it right here in the cat tool. And they could even translate you know, from wherever they are in the world, um, which is super helpful. 
Yeah, for sure. And, and like we said, visual context is just one of many different tools that we have built into the platform here. So like Adrian alluded to, we talked about the style guide, which you saw pop up. There's also the glossary, which is terminology that is either brand specific or industry specific that customers can build out for their translators to say, hey, anytime this appears, how we want you to translate it or not translate it. Um, as far as, you know, we talked about transparency, you've got a full history of everything that's happened with each string. So, you know, instead of it being like a black box solution, which maybe you previously worked with, or you send the content over to an agency, they translate it, you have no idea what's happened to it, and then you get it back. You can literally see what's happened every single step of the way through the entire process here. Yeah. And then we have the communication component that Adrian alluded to, where you can actually communicate to a linguist, you can provide instructions, you can reject translations if you think they don't meet your requirements and communicate back to the linguist. Um, we even have a Slack integration if you use with this issue so that you can actually communicate with linguists via Slack rather than having to even log into the platform. Yeah, that's really cool. And there, there's the ability to also resize the visual context. Yeah. Yep. So that's a good point too. So in the visual context here, you can see there's this little gear icon. One of the things you can do too is you can switch between the English source and see here's what this looks like as its original English source. And then I want to see what it looks like with the translations and you can toggle back and forth between the original English source and translated page. And then there's also different views here. So it defaults to the desktop view, but if you want to see what your site would look like translated with tablet, you can view it in tablet mode. And then you can also switch it to mobile mode to see what it would look like on a mobile phone. It's worth noting that the demonstration that, that Connor is sharing with you now is utilizing our global delivery network solution. So this is for dynamic websites that have that integration. Not all visual context solutions are going to exactly support the view that you're seeing here right now, but this is our, our cat tool and this is what all customers and translators would see when they're using the translation experience. Um, and for different types of content, the, the, the way that context works is slightly different, but this is the most dynamic form. Yeah, that's correct. Um, so like, depending on what kind of content it is that you're, like Adrian said, this may appear slightly different, um, but definitely, you know, as much as you can get context on it, again, you can see the, the benefits here of how much it aids in the translation process, rather than just simply having, you know, two columns of text as if, the translator were working in a spreadsheet. Yeah, exactly. Um, a couple of questions have come up in the chat that I want to quickly address. Um, the first is that uh, one, one of uh, the attendees has content that's coming in. Uh, it's a one-sheeter. When the customer or when this user gets the content, it's already in a PDF, but the content is created in InDesign. How would you suggest, Connor, that this person approaches visual context for that content? Yeah, so in design, if you, let's say, use the original source, which it, we support IDML files, that's the most common um, format. We don't support .indv, which you should be aware of, but .idml files, if you upload them into SmartLink, it will pull in the context from that particular document. Oddly. Now, it won't be as interactive as you see here with like a GDN um, project, but you will still be able to get that visual element here. There will be an option to switch between the English source view and the, con the, the translated context view. So you can see the document both in its original English source and it's translated. The only difference between that and what you see here is that you can't actually click on the text in the ML file. It's also worth noting that the other benefit is if you're using the source file, the translations will go exactly into place when they're completed into the InDesign file so that you don't have to reformat the entire page. Right. That's exactly right. Yeah. So if you're not familiar how it works with any kind of document translation in SmartLink is that we essentially create a, a complete copy of the English source in each translated language. And the placement of the translations is exactly where the placement of the text was in English to make sure that all the formatting is maintained. Um, so it's a little bit hard to see here. And this is obviously GDN, but you can put like little tags here in some cases non-breaking spaces, different tags. So we maintain the formatting of any website, of any document, as the translations are being done. So once the file is downloaded or once the translations are returned back to a website or mobile app, that formatting is gained and it doesn't require any additional work to reformat that text um, once it's final. 
Yeah, exactly. Well, this is great. Um, how about I take the screen back and uh, we'll finish up the presentation and we'll, we'll open it to more questions. Yeah, sure. Did you want me to show the upload process for the screenshots of yeah. the... That would be great. Let's do that. Yeah. So there's one other thing that we had discussed that I kind of wanted to show you here. Um, we had talked about screenshots and there, there's basically two ways that you can associate a screenshot um, or any kind of image with a string. So one is at the individual string level. So if I select a string, there's this option to add context, add an individual image to each string. That's the much more manual way, but you can like individually link images to individual strings. The more automated way, which is great features of SmartLink, is you can see there's this context tab here in the project we're working in. So if I go to the context tab, this allows me to do essentially a bulk upload of screens into the platform. And what it'll do is it'll upload the screenshot into this sort of repository, of all images that we have. And then it will sync up strings of text that already exist based on what we see in the image. So we have what's called OCR technology that basically looks at the image, looks at the text in the image and tries to extract it and link up that text with existing strings from files you've uploaded into the platform. And it's very easy to do a bulk upload. If I choose image text here, excuse me, you can do like a drag and drop in here, or you can do upload files and you can browse out to, you know, wherever your images are and you can multi-select whatever you want and do a big bulk upload of images into here. And then once you do that, like I said, as long as your strings of text are already in the project, it will automatically go through and start it up for you. And then once it's done, you'll be able to see, okay, here are all of the strings that this particular image. And you can see here, we also pull in any kind of, from like the convention, for example, um, that you've captured or from the GDN, regardless of where it's coming from, it all gets stored in this repository. So you can kind of search through and find any context elements that you need in this one spot. That's awesome, Connor. So there's one question that came in that I think we should definitely address, which is, um, does adding visual context add cost to the translation job? It does not. So visual context is completely free. It doesn't add any additional cost. It doesn't change the per word rate you're paying with either your agency or if you're using SmartLink language services, our in-house agency. Um, there's no additional cost of it. it. It only adds benefit at no cost. And in some ways, it can actually reduce the cost of the translation process because you're making the process more efficient. You're taking less time. When the translators are getting it, it means less edits, less content getting rejected if you're doing any kind of internal review and having to send it back to the agency where you may get charged more product management fees for additional work, something like that. So it actually is a, a cost reduction method, I would say, rather than incurring any kind of cost. I think that's actually also a really good segue to the, the remainder of the slides that we have. So I'll take back the screen share um, and, and just elaborate that on that for, for one moment here. Um, when, we, when we pulled translators towards the end or the middle of the end of 2019, there were a number of things that we learned from translators that we thought were really insightful. Uh, these are the four most important things that translators are looking for from their customers. The first is they need visual context. They need it because they know that delivering high quality work is one of your highest priorities and they want to do a good job for you. Uh, second, they want to have the ability to communicate with their customers, sort of like we are right now. Um, they want to have the one-to-one -one or one-to-few dialogue that's really important to getting content correct. Uh, other two that are really important, they want feedback on their work. So if you have the opportunity to let them know their translations are great, give them that thumbs up. And if you feel like the translations need some work, let them know exactly what it is that will help improve their work. Uh, they want to, to do a good job for you. And lastly is time. They would like to have more time to do translation. I'm sure we'd all like more time to do a lot of things in life. Um, but what I think is so interesting about this one 
Connor, is that for, for all four of these, or for all, I guess, for the latter three, they all really hinge on visual context, don't you think? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, especially, you know, we talked about like cost and quality, but time is really a key part of this is that, you know, with the visual context component, it hopefully will allow the translators to get it right the first time and put a lot less strain on editors or review make changes, which can slow down the process or create a bottleneck. Um, you know, if it's right the first time because they have that visual context component, it means that there's less edits, less changes in review, and the content can reach market much quicker than it normally would. So basically, you have to look at cost differently. First and foremost, it, it will not add cost to the cost per word in Smartling, and it doesn't add to your software subscription cost. It's included in the subscription cost. We want every customer to use visual context. The more users that use visual context, the, the greater experience you will have and the higher quality work your translators will produce. But if you think about cost more holistically, to summarize Connor's point, the time it takes for you to produce the translations and the number of people who are involved will decrease when you use visual context. And that's because the, the ability to create high quality work hinges on visual context, but it also hinges on your ability to provide your translators with a suite of linguistic assets that enable the translators to get the content right the first time. There are quality multipliers that are in your linguistic assets. One of them is your visual context that eliminates the need for your translator to guess what your content is trying to say. And then if you build and maintain your style guide, your glossary and your translation memory on an ongoing bat basis, you will have linguistic assets that reduce the amount of dollars that you spend on translation over time. Is this an experience that you've seen with customers, Connor? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, like we said, the, the context is part of one element of the Smartling suite that really aid in translation quality. And if you kind of take it as a whole, including like comprehensive style guides, glossaries, efficiently configuring your translation memory to get leverage, you're gonna get translations, you're gonna reduce the cost, and you're gonna put a lot less strain on all of your research. And you know, it's really gonna achieve high quality translations, higher speed translations, and um, lower translations. So it all kind of is combined together into you know, increasing the benefits of, um, of using these tools in Smartling. Yeah, and to directly answer this question with a case study, Lyft is, a proud customer of Smartling, and we've worked with them on many different projects, but specifically with visual context and other tools that they use with Smartling, they were able to reduce their speed to market by 76%, and they were able to eliminate error rates to near zero after publish, which means after the translator and editor did their work, the content was published, and almost never did the customer go back and change or alter any of those translations. This is just one story of hundreds of customers that we work with that are able to realize greater value by using visual context. And the last, uh, the last slide that we've got is just to, a reminder that when you utilize all of these tools and when you're thinking more holistically about your translation program, you are moving the world with words. This is our campaign that, that helps to elevate the profile of the language translation industry. Um, we've, we've published a book about translators so that you can get to know their lives better. Um, but, but this is really a campaign about you, about Connor, the customer success team that helps our customers to reach markets and audiences worldwide. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's something that's really important to us at Smartling and you can learn more about it online, smartling.com. You know, that's, that, those are our thoughts on visual context. Uh, I guess in summary, Connor, there are many ways to introduce visual context uh, to your content and there are the, the way that you use visual context will depend on your, your content type, fair to say? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And second, um, it will drastically reduce the amount of time for you to get your translations done and thereby reducing your, your cost and overall investment in language translation. Absolutely.
And I would encourage you to reach out to your customer success manager if you have any questions about this. We're all very well versed in the tools that we offer and are here to help you and guide you on how best to, to make these work. Exactly. So look, you've got a Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. Feel free to ask a question there. We'll hang on the call for a few minutes. You're also welcome to throw your questions or comments into the chat. We really, really appreciate that you've made uh, some time for us today. And we, Connor and I both really wish you and your families good yeah. health in this time. Uh, we know it's a little bit of a, an uncertain period and it's uh, jarring for all of us. Connor, you and your family are doing okay? Yeah, we're doing okay. Obviously stuck in the house trying to balance working, my wife working, and we have a two-year-old. So it's it's a lot of work, but you know, we're making it work and just trying to stay safe and healthy like everyone. Yeah, me too. Me too. Well, we'll hang out while, uh, thank you all for joining, but we'll, we'll still be here for a few more minutes. So if people have questions, they're, they're welcome to answer them and we'll, we'll answer. Uh, thank you, Zach, for joining. We really appreciate your being here. Uh, we'll also be sending out a recording of the webinar. Uh, thank you, Christy. We re really appreciate your joining. We'll send out a recording of the webinar. Uh, we'll send out a, a link to the resources that we circulated in the chat. Um, as Connor mentioned, yeah, if you have a success manager and account manager, feel free to contact them. We'll be able to help you guys uh, navigate uh, visual context. Connor, I've got one question for you. Um, yeah. What what uh, have you have you got like an example in your mind of a customer that used visual context and like realized a massive like success from that implementation? Yeah, actually, a recent customer would be Dolby. Um, so I've been working with Dolby for a little while. They used our Contentful connector where they got native context, but then they started translating resource files, so technical files that don't automatically have that context associated. They had some issues with translation quality early on. And so one of the things they did working with us and the SmartLing language services team um, is to increase their context. They started capturing screenshots and using that bulk context uploader that we saw in that context tab. Um, and they really kind of did a comprehensive uh, overview of all of their resource files and how to get the context in there. And once they did that, they saw a pretty significant increase in the translation quality. Um, it the translators get that visual component that was sorely lacking beforehand. Um, and to date, they have had great feedback on the translation quality since providing that context element. Yeah, cool. I've seen countless examples as well, but I think we should leave it there. No more questions in the chat. Thank you, Connor. Um, yeah, thank you, Adrian. And thank yeah. you guys for all joining. We appreciate it. Exactly. Thanks so much and be well. Take care. Yeah, you as well. Bye.